Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining today's webinar. I am Laura Malevich. I'm the Director of Marketing and Business Development of Simplify. Today, we're excited to have our Senior Solution Director, whom a lot of you know, Beth McGreen, um, discussing and demoing our prepackaged solution for retail sales and margin planning. If you, uh, please feel free to reach out to Beth and myself after the webinar with any questions. And also, um, when the webinar ends, a short survey is going to appear. So if you guys are able to take a minute or two and fill that out, we'd really appreciate it. Um, so yeah, now I will hand it over to Beth so she can get started. Thanks. All right, thanks, Lauren. Um, and thanks, everyone, for joining the webinar today. Um, we're going to focus on uh, margin planning uh, within the SAP Analytics Cloud solution, um, really geared and towards the retail industry. And so focusing on um, the prepackaged content that Simplify has provided, has created. Um, so we'll get to share a lot of those templates and pre-built calculations with you. We're going to talk through um, a little bit about that upcoming here in a few slides. And then the second half will be more of a live demonstration of our prepackaged content um, and kind of go through all of that. So um, thanks again for joining. So we'll start off. Um, I just have a few slides um, to cover off just in general, um, high level around the solution. But I, I prefer to jump into the demonstration as fast as I can um, to actually show you live some of the um, capabilities of SAP Analytics Cloud. But we'll do a quick introduction, um, especially if it's something that you're new to Simplify or you're new to SAP Analytics Cloud in general. Um, just a couple quick slides on that. And then we'll talk about, again, more specific to the retail planning side around kind of the business requirements, what those solution goals would be, um, what is actually included in that prepackaged solution. Um, and then we'll move over to the demonstration. So if you're not familiar with Simplify, um, we're really a, a, what I would consider a niche boutique firm. We focus and specialize really all around the EPM and analytics um, area. Um, yeah, obviously our, our specialties are focused on SAP Analytics Cloud, uh, on business planning and consolidation. The majority of our team is made up of um, finance individuals, um, although, of course, we have technical folks as well, but um, the majority of our functional team, um, you know, are CPAs, MBAs. Um, so, you know, we come to you with a lot of accounting and finance experience. And we are headquartered in Chicago area, but um, certainly we have projects um, all over from coast to coast. So if you have any other information or want any other information around Simplify, you know, feel free to reach out. So um, just really fast, again, if you're new to SAP Analytics Cloud, um, the solution is allows you to not only, you know, we focus today on the planning aspect, right, and kind of the capabilities um, that the planning um, allows you to do. But certainly when you purchase SAC, um, again, I'll call it SAC, but that's the acronym for SAP Analytics Cloud, um, you also are getting the BI components, the predictive components. So having all of those dashboards, visualizations um, built into one. Um, the collaboration is really nice in SAC. So being able to, you know, from a planning perspective, be able to collaborate, um, send, share templates very easily um, with different permissions, be able to have, you know, sort of like an IM uh, discussion with additional users. Uh, where you can, again, pass information, pass templates. So um, the collaboration around being able to facilitate an overall planning process is actually um, very impactful as well with Analytics Cloud. And so you can see kind of in the middle circle that we focus on, while we're going to focus a lot more um, on you know, some specific components as it relates to retail planning, um, just the core components in SAC, having different version management, what if you know, scenario planning, simulations, things like that, um, obviously driver-based. So being able to have planning our um, product units um, times, you know, what our retail, average unit retail is versus our average unit cost, things of that nature, you know, being able to drive, um, have those drivers to drive our sales uh, and our cost figures and our financials. 
So um, again, a lot of these bullet points here are built into our prepackaged content, but as um, a baseline, this is sort of inherent functionality that um, SAC allows you to do for your planning process. And then really on here, there's there's two, you know, as far as we look at key differentiators, there's a lot of them, um, in my opinion, as, as it relates to analytics cloud. But a couple that really pop out to me, probably the number one is the flexibility around the solution, which is why I have it bolded here. But um, it's really the simplicity and the flexibility. So flexibility is, you know, and as we're going to see, you know, with as it relates to retail is, um, you know, having, you know, per perhaps your merchandise group be looking at data in a certain way versus your store operations that may want to see that at different levels of data um, in different views, right? I want to look at stores versus products and um, being able to do that all within one model um, and give everybody their different views so that it's a nice collaborative approach, um, again, makes it SAC makes it very easy to do so, where in other solutions, it's, you know, um, a little bit more difficult. A lot of times you have to have separate models set up. You have to pass data back and forth. Um, you have to perform allocations, um, whereas a lot of this you'll see with SAC, if you're not familiar, has kind of the automated disaggregation, right? So we can plan at different levels and um, all around have that flexibility. And then really the simplicity of, you know, you have maybe um, X amount of stores and they need to contribute to the um, store plan after it's pushed down to them and they're reviewing it and they're making changes. You know, being able to actually deploy this just off of like Google Chrome versus having to, you know, install um, solution, it makes it a very easy and quick deployment as well. So those would be a couple of quick things that I would, you know, allows you to really get kind of a quick start and jump start um, into SAC. So now let's, you know, gear towards margin planning for retail a little bit and kind of talk about just the overall maybe business problems, um, goals, things of that nature. Um, I just have kind of a, a sample um, grid here. But, you know, basically looking at, as I mentioned before, some of the complexities, um, some of the issues with having uh, maybe your finance team, your centralized finance that is responsible and that's obtaining obtaining targets, right? getting some top line targets for your comparative stores, um, getting data as far as, you know, potential new store openings, um, things of that nature, closing, store closings as well, you know, and having those target, that target information be then available and kind of allocated down to um, more of a product based level. Right, so being able to have that capability um, allocate that plan um, that's going to go across stores. So again, kind of merchandising being more uh, product focused, store operations obviously being more store focused, um, and then um, you know some of the uh, adjustments that may need to go into consideration when we're looking at you know promotional items. You know, you maybe you're perhaps having uh, promote. A promotion on um, a certain product on the last week of every every month or you know again whatever the case may be it allows um, also then for you to make adjustments to that um, to your units to your overall sales um, to impact you know to allow the promotions to impact your overall forecast and plans so perhaps you have a, a business problem where it's disconnected really is kind of what it comes down to. Um, a lot of times it's difficult to do anything below um, a monthly level, um, just especially if you're working in Excel um, or you know, even in with some other solutions, you know, maybe getting down to a week is appropriate, but some companies you know, have been uh, requesting down to a daily view, especially when it comes from the store operations and when they want to be able to see actual versus budget, what was budgeted. So um, that difficulty that is solved as well with this, with SAC, you can certainly get down to that level. Um, and then, you know, again, kind of looking at when you're looking at comparative versus new stores, um, the ability to automate, you know, have kind of automatic calculations based on open dates within the system, based on closing dates within the system. 
Um, so again, those would all be some business problems that we that this prepackaged content should hopefully be able to help you solve. Um, the goal of this, obviously, with our prepackaged content, um, is to you know certainly reduce effort um, overall from your planning process from start to finish, but to um, help facilitate the um, the overall planning process. All right. So again, if it's very de decentralized and disconnected right now bringing it together a little bit more centralized, um, but also then to facilitate a process. Um, and again, to provide that integrated planning between the different areas. Um, certainly to help with the collaboration, we talked about that already, and using that version management to, you know, again, kind of um, help create those scenarios, um, best case, worst case, things like that, that can certainly be shared across um, your departments or stores. Um, and then obviously, you know, being able to provide that automation. Automation hopefully helps, again, kind of reduce efforts, especially for manual efforts, um, right? So being able to provide automatic calculations um, for, you know, for new stores, for comparing between um, new and existing stores. So having all of that capabilities is, you know, again, kind of the goal at, with the prepackaged solution. So what's included? So what what with the prepackage? What what's there? Um, you know, as far as what are the components of it, I should say. And so what the accelerator um, or the solution provides, they have certainly um, a launch pad that kind of identifies different um, templates. So we talk about the target setting. So being able to set high level targets, just you know, between comp versus new stores. Um, being able to have, um, we've got a, a product focused or merchandising plan template that's going to be able to plan um, by period, by week. We're planning units, um, AUR, AUC, uh, having the um, automated, the, the built in calculations to calculate your sales. Um, also built in uh, what we call inverse functionality, uh, which allows you to plan at different, again, this kind of lends back to the flexibility. So what, when I say inverse, basically what it means is I can plan to build up my data where I can plan my sales, I can plan my costs, and I can get to my gross profit. Um, I also have the inverse functionality where, you know, some, some stores, some locations may say, okay, we've got our sales, and we know what our gross margin targets are. And that is, you know, usually a little bit more um, realistic and so where you have gross margin targets gross margin percent targets and so you can actually enter in gross margin by dollar you can enter in gross margin by percent and that's going to go in and back in um, to your um, again by holding usually we, you would hold your sales excuse me sales uh, constant and then it will go ahead and adjust your cost so it actually makes it really neat because you can plan um, at different ways. And I'll show you that in the demonstration as well. So in addition to that, then we have our store focus. So the store focus can, again, look at it by, um, by period down to week, down to the day. Um, if they need to make, um, it's all in the same data set. They can make adjustments. They could make a, a new version and make adjustments off of that. You could have a store, um, a, store planning version versus kind of the, the product planning version and marry those two together as well. Um, in addition to that, there's a, a promotions template. So as I mentioned before, you can set up where we have like a promotional activity dimension that allows you to um, capture some additional data as it relates to that. And then certainly some financial reports that go along with creating um, that automated calculation around um, comparative stores as well as just some pre-built along with these pre-built templates and pre-built reports as well. So um, as far as what's included solution prerequisites, um, if you're not already uh, an SAC planning user um, or your company doesn't already have planning licenses, that certainly would be something that is required. Um, so that is a separate license from um, the existing, if you had like existing BI licenses, that would be more of the visualization and dashboards. These are separate licenses that would be planning. Uh, the, obviously, uh, 
data connections. So knowing um, where our data sources are at to source um, SAC with our actual data. And then also as a prerequisite, if we are doing automated, now certainly I should back up and say with SAC, um, you have the op opportunity to connect directly to the data source. You also can load or import via flat file. Typically when we're talking about um, these models that pertain to retail where we're getting, um, you know, potentially down to a daily feed of, of data of actual, <clears throat> Uh, typically, we would see that as more of an automated connection, but again, just wanted to mention that that functionality exists either way. Um, certainly, if you were looking at you know, using a solution similar to this, but say, I, hey, I only need it at the week level, or I only need it at the monthly level, we don't go down that, that far. That's certainly fine as well. Um, but we do also, if we do have automated connections, we require there is a cloud connector which is basically just the um, brokers that connection between your source system and SAC. And so from our, the prepackaged content that we have, obviously we have a, the model that is set up with dimensions, um, already has the calculations built in, the templates um, built in, and then it comes with just a sample data set um, so that you can obviously work with the, the model first and and um, you know, see what, what is required to make any adjustments. And so you may ask, well, how do you deploy the solution? Um, you know, I, I go back to SAC, it really is a self-service tool um, for the companies that I have implemented and helped um, with their planning processes. It is, you know, we initially start off, we, um, we build the models, we set up the models, so there are some consulting services. With the prepackaged um, content, um, you would be able to go open it up, review it, um, obviously, but I think all in all, SAC is a self-service tool that requires um, a little bit of training, obviously, but for the most part, it's fairly intuitive um, as you want to make changes to, you know, add in your chart of accounts or, add in um, you know, your locations, um, your departments, things of that nature. So um, what I would say though is you know, certainly you can take advantage of our consulting services to get you off on the right um, foot. Uh, you know, helping with, as I mentioned, a lot of times it's, it's certainly training. Um, so we've done some implementations and they've been very quick implementations. And then post that it's just been more training exercises um, to help them get to the next step in their model. Um, so certainly we can take that approach. Obviously with resource limitations, possibly at companies, we do certainly have managed projects as well. Um, but again, other things are customizations to the standard content that we have, adjusting kind of the templates to how you would actually like to see them in different ways, again, are just you know, should be fairly um, simplistic. Um, and so I'm just kind of adjusting the overall um, content possibly to fit your business requirements, right? So it might not be 100% fit, might be 50% fit, and then we will make adjustments to allow you to utilize it within your company. Okay, so I'm gonna switch gears here and I'm gonna move over. my live demonstration. Okay, so let's talk about, I'm gonna go through a couple different areas here um, and show you a few different, uh, some of it will be prepackaged content, some of, the, of it will be just, you know, inherent functionality to Analytics Cloud that, you know, kind of goes hand in hand with what we build. Um, you know, certainly we try with all of our content to have what we kind of consider these launch pads. Um, so it's easy. You know, certainly within SAC, you have your main menu, right? And you can browse, you can browse your files. And so you could find um, every one of these five files, you know, that are these links here for me. Um, but again, having a process, having a launch pad, having a, a 
somewhere for your users to go and to easily say, okay, let me click on this link and access, I think, um, is very helpful. So we're going to start. I'm going to go ahead and click on the target setting. So, you know, as we mentioned, possibly in the beginning, you might be getting high level targets. Finance might be receiving high level targets. This is not at a product focus. This is not necessarily at a store um, or a location focus. This is really just more um, at a very high level. And sometimes it's just looking at prior year actuals and we're saying, you know, we're going to, you know, hopefully um, exceed that by maybe a, a, a particular percentage. And so those, or, you know, specifically, you know, what those actual dollar targets are going to be. So I'm just looking here for my, um, my sales target, for example. And so I'm just focusing on this template. And so just to kind of level set and what this means, this is what we call a story. So if you're new to Analytics Cloud, when I open this up, it was just a link, right? It opened up into a new tab. If I look at dry eyes up here. So I have a new tab up here that is now my template. Um, you will see the terminology called story. So that's because I can have a report, I can have a template, I could have a graph or any um, form of visualization also um, on here. And you'll see that, that I, and I'll have different tabs here. And so a story is basically anything that, you know, again, tell, I guess tells the story about the data. Right. So again, it could be a report, it could be a, a template, you just kind of define what you want on the page. And so each one of these, you know, what may be considered tabs are really um, in the SAC terminology are pages, right? So I'm starting off by just looking at my sales. And then if I draw your eyes over here into the actual um, template area, there's a couple things to point out. Um, one, you can see here, I have what looks like a little play button and it says seeding, you know, seed target. And so what I'm going to show you here in a minute is actually running that within the report. I have my actuals and just to kind of set the stage for the demonstration, actual, um, 2019 are my actuals budget. You can see here, I've already have my users that have been doing some, um, some updating to their budget. Now budget is, would be what I would consider my bottoms up. Um, you know, bottoms up, zero base, um, or uh, through a starting point like seeding. Um, so, but either way, that's where we're actually doing the driver base, and we'll get to that in a minute. And then we have our target, which would be more of that top down, right? This is just kind of the, probably the guidance or other. Um, but as we build up our budget, we can then uh, um, assign our targets at a high level, and in SAC, it automatically pushes that all the way down. Um, to a product level, to um, a store location level, right? So I have that capability um, where it does that automatically um, based on the seeding that I may do of um, in this instance of my forecast is what we're gonna do. But you can see my forecast is actually also for, for my um, 2019, this would be, again, just to kind of um, illustrate it, actual 2019 is through Q3 and then my forecast is, um, you know, through Q4 as an example. Okay, so included in here are these um, what we call data actions. The data actions are um, calculations that we embed into the solution. So here, um, as I mentioned, I can easily come in and I could, if I know an actual dollar target um, that I want for my new stores or I want my do dollar target for my my comp stores I can go in and I can type certainly type those numbers in um, what is you know typically more helpful is if I use my data action so if I press that play button there I can go in and I can say okay I want to go ahead and select target and I'm basically going to copy from 2019 to 2020. I know I'm probably a year behind here. So, And then I'm going to go ahead and run that. So as we look at this model, I should also mention it goes all the way down to a day, um, all the way down to a day. So here where I have target 2020, I can expand if I wanted to. I actually could expand this 
2020 to the week and down to the day. So all of that, that copy, that seeding from my forecast, you can see here that I have, you know, 7663, 7663. Okay, so it made it a copy. Um, because I, all of that happened, you know, if you notice within a couple seconds, and that made it all the way down to the day level. Okay, so the calculations within SAC are actually pretty powerful, um, very quick. So there, this is the way that I can come in here. Maybe I want to take comp stores, and you'll see this um, probably in a couple different examples that I have. But here I, I could come in and I could just say, okay, for my comp stores, um, based on my prior year, actual forecast i'm going to go in and i'm going to i want to increase that by 10 percent right we want to see a 10 percent increase um i in sac you can just come in and say well i want plus 10 percent right so i can do that and automatically it updates you can see within you know a second there it changed over 50,000 records so i can do that very quickly as i mentioned i can key in the numbers I can also, um, if I dry rise to the left here, I've got different products um, as well as locations. And so, again, if your targets needed to be more specific, but you could see, you know, for all of my comp stores, if I wanted to be you know, very specific to, uh, you know, hand lotion, for example, I can do that and narrow that down. And I can say, okay, comparative stores, this is my target sales dollars for all of my comparative stores, right? Just for the hand cream product, all right? So you can have what we call these page filters for whatever dimension, uh, dimensionality you would like, um, where you can really just slice and dice your data, um, review it, and you'll see that again through a couple different templates in the, in the demonstration. So I'm just going to, tab over here, I want to talk about that inverse functionality just a little bit. Um, so again, when we talk about targets, we may be providing a sales target, and then there might be a margin, right? We know that we're going to have a gross margin percent of 40% or 10%, <laughs> um, whatever the case may be. Um, but the inherent functionality, what we call inverse functionality in SAC, allows me to, um, you know, maybe I should back up and say, really with some other solutions, you have to enter data at a base level, right? So you have to enter in your sales, you have to enter in your cost, and that will get you to your gross profit. And that's fine. Um, that allows you for one method of planning. With SAC, you know, you can see here, I've got actually this divided out by my different regions. Um, so I have all of my um, locations that roll up to my southern region versus my east versus my west. Um, and then you can see that I have basically gross margin target and then I have gross margin dollar target. So I can come in and I don't have to, you know, gross margin that might be a parent or a grouping, right, a sum um, of my sales and my cost. I instead can come in and I can enter in gross margin dollars or I actually can take my KPI, kind of more of my statistical account, gross margin percentage, and I can update that. Maybe I said this is way too high. It needs to be around 20% within my southern region. And when I enter in 20%, it updates my gross margin, which ultimately then updates my, um, my cost. Right? So I, and that's the way that I have defined it, is that it allows me to um, keep my sales constant because that is the target I'm trying to reach. And then I'm also trying to reach a gross margin target. And so then it'll go ahead and back into um, my cost. So you don't have to have it that way. If you do it the other way around, um, you certainly can back into sales or, you know, so that's the beauty of um, this, what we consider our um, inverse functionality in SAC. Okay. So again, just being able to make changes to your gross margin percent and that being flowed back um, into your actual financial information. The other thing that I wanted to showcase, so again, these templates come included, um, here is just to review 
the capability of version management and just the con the key concept of this because this comes up a lot um, and it tends to be in my opinion a very powerful um, tool as it relates to planning and so basically what I have here is the, the same report as we did with the sales target right just to give you kind of some consistency here we added um, a visualization at the bottom, my, a graph that shows um, what my variances are from my bot currently. You know, we entered in our targets. We already have users entering in our budget. So I can see here how far off um, that bottoms up is from the target that we just created. Um, so again, you can have a lot of these different uh, variance calculations, variance um, through the visualizations, through your graphs, things like that. But what I want to focus on is on the toolbar up here we have an option called version management. And so each one of these that you see here, actual budget, target forecast, if I click on that version management, my little uh, window pops up here. And you can see there are the versions that are in my report. So I have public versions and then I have private versions. And so this would be, you know, the exact um, where I can take, let's see, I'll take budget for example. I can click on that to make a copy and I can say maybe this is budget version two, um, which is going to be my maybe my worst case. I'm going to copy, we'll copy all the data over. So you could call this, yeah, you know, I called it version two, right? But you could have, um, you certainly could do something like a um, worst case, best case, things along those lines. And notice that it shows up in my private version. All right, so now what, what does that mean? So me as the user, I have this private version and now I can go in, I can make adjustments to it. Um, and so I can make a worst case, a best case, and nobody else will actually have the right to see it unless, um, unless A, I publish it, or B, maybe there's just one or two people that need to see it to share it with, but it shouldn't be, you know, um, an option for all of my reports for the users to select different versions. So I have the capability to share. Um, so this is, again, kind of going back to that whole collaborative approach. So I have this private version. I've made, changed some of my um, assumptions in it. Now I can go and I can share this version um, and I can decide whether the person I'm sharing with should just be reading it or if you're going to give them permission to make adjustments to it as well read and write um, but either way it allows you then to just share it with um, you know one or two users versus the entire user base so this kind of keeps things I look at this not only on the planning side but there's um, sometimes where you have um, flash reporting that's not finalized um, as, as your actual data and so there's different um, again different options to have different um, versions. And that's just overall, that's just inherent functionality in SAC that we call version management. But I think it's um, important enough topic to cover during these demos um, because it is pretty, um, you know, again, it, it is very beneficial as it relates to simulations, different modeling, um, different what if type scenarios, okay? Now, finally, I'll, um, this is more of a just report view. Um, certainly, it can hold details. It has some actual uh, sales in here, which, again, that metric could be changed into anything. Um, the key point is actually for users that um, don't have model management access. So you can see here I have, I just selected, basically, I have all of my um, different locations or stores, and then I actually have um, open date. And so this is a, a property or an attribute as it relates to the store. And as this, why this is important is, um, and I'll, we'll show you here, is the logic and the calculations that we built for the kind of comp versus new store. Um, we are assuming that in our calculation that after 12 months, that new store, um, those financial results now get um, consolidated to your comp store review, your financial review, um, certainly that can be adjusted. If it's 18 months, if it's 24 months, if it's six months, um, you can certainly adjust that in the logic and the rules that we've um, embedded into this content. But here is the you know important piece basically is that 
whether we're getting data, um, either that property will be updated. Um, we can just feed that through with any source data. If there's uh, open date um, attributes in the source data, we can certainly just grab that and pull that through. Otherwise, you can certainly have the ability to manually make adjustments. Okay, so that's just, again, kind of describing, we'll go through that data action here in a moment. So that's just um, all around the, more on the target setting, right, as it relates to um, retail and, and kind of making that high. And what I'll mention, again, I mentioned during the slides is that this is, again, one model. We don't have a separate model that focuses on the stores. We don't have one model that focuses on the products. Um, with other solutions, because of performance reasons, um, quite honestly, a lot, a lot of times in the past, we wouldn't, we wouldn't necessarily be able to have all of this data within, um, within one model. Or, or sometimes it was difficult to be able to plan at different levels. And so we would have to, again, one model would have to be at a monthly level, one model would have to be at a weekly, one would have to be at a daily, and then we'd have to do allocations to push data back and forth. And that no longer is the case with utilizing SAC for that planning. So here is just another um, example of some of the, the templates. So here, uh, what would be, Similar to, you know, I can see here, basically, I have my product. So this is my product view, right? And so I have my, um, I have different periods here. I have my budget year that I can go in and update. I can expand and I can see for P1, I can plan specifically by week, week one, week two. Um, you can adjust this. I have this set up, I think, as just a, um, a calendar year model, but just to point out, I mean, it absolutely works within a fiscal year as well. So you define, when you define the model, um, what your starting month will be, um, and it will automatically adjust to that. Um, but here you can see, basically, I can come in, and I, have again, using the page filters, I selected just here, hand and, and body, I can expand on, be a little bit here. So now I can see I've got shower gel, my body lotion, hand cream, so on and so forth. And so these would be my, my unit planning. So of course I can get down, I can plan at the week level if this is what's uh, most common. I can plan at the month level. Um, I can plan at the year level. So um, I can do that. I can plan at um, different product groupings. So if it's for all of it, or I can get down to my actual um, you know, whether it be my SKU level essential to plan at that level as well, all right? And so just like we had, um, you know, here I can see that my, I've got my consumer products here as 1.2. I have a little um, indicator. So this is just be like another visualization down here. It says 1.1. Um, so users have started making some adjustments, but just to kind of show you, similar to the forecast where we seeded the forecast with our target, we've got more functionality that allows us to take units now, right? And maybe I want to, um, for the budget, I want to take units from prior year. And I want to seed my 2020 budget with that. So similar to the other data action, I have data actions embedded into these templates that allow me to come in. And then this way now when I refresh, you'll see that my total 1156 actually matches my prior year 1156, which again, this is just um, a key indicator that you can put as more of a visualization. So now just like as that user focused on products, if I'm just focused on the, you know, shower gel or body, you know, that, that certain uh, product grouping, I can just focus and select that within there. Um, certainly if I'm responsible for all of personal care, very similar to what I did with, um, with some of the target setting, you can come in here, you can key in, you can make adjustments, you can add, you know, plus or minus, you know, 5% and it'll go ahead and update 
um, one of the things that you probably are recognizing is that there, it's turning yellow, right, is when I make changes. And so what it does is any change that I make, it will tell me everything that it's impacted, right? So if I hit refresh up on my toolbar, you're going to see it goes back to its normal alternating lines format that I have this template set up as. But if I make a change, again, to just week one, again, maybe I'm going to say, just to make it easy, I'm going to increase week one by 10% because we're going to be running based on historicals. We know that that's going to be bumped up more. So in this case, you can see here, once I did that, it did not impact, did not change or update weeks two through five. But of course, because I updated uh, week one, it's update. It's also impacting period one and just the overall total. So anytime I can go and I can refresh, but um, anytime you make any changes, it will highlight any um, lines in the template that it has been impacted. So that's kind of nice as a check. Okay, so that is just, again, that's very similar to, um, to the target setting. Again, this, this, is, this is more product focused where I can come in, select the product, I can plan, um, down to various levels at whichever level I need to and and complete that from a sales unit perspective. Now, as we look at the pricing, the key the key to really kind of describe here is um, from an average unit retail. What's nice in SAC is you can see that, you know, maybe I have my retail price of, you know, if we focus down here to say hand cream. My average unit retail for the entire budget year is $12, but I can come in. And so again, with other systems, so SAC, you actually can identify this account that I'm going to be saving my, my average unit retail account. Um, I am saving this as an aggregation type of average. And so it has that flexibility, whereas other solutions is okay if, if you're looking at a total it's always going to aggregate right sums everything up well in sac you can actually define it to be an average so that's um you know in my mind pretty pretty neat functionality because i can come in here and say all right for you know p2 i can make any type of changes again i can make that down to the week level um you know at a month level at a full year level but what it allows me to do then you know maybe just by the entire year, I said we're actually going to be reducing that unit price for this is going to be 850, right? And I'm saying that that's just going to be the average for the year. So notice that when I do that, okay, so now hand cream, I've got based on how it was proportionally weighted uh, with the existing data that was there, it will go ahead and apply that change throughout all the way down. Um, so again, that can be used, you could do that again at a total personal care level, product grouping level, or again, all the way down to your SKU level, right? And so very quick, very efficient to make those changes. But the key um, takeaway on this template is that, you know, within this model is that we have um, unit retail, unit costs that are defined as an aggregation type of average so that you're able to do this. So then, uh, which leads us to, again, we're kind of looking at the budget data now, we're building it up. So this is where we have the calculations built in place, um, where similar to what we've done before, I can calculate my sales. Um, I'm going to calculate it on my budget, right? And it'll go ahead and run. So those are the embedded um, calculations calculation that will take your drivers and basically update. And again, it'll notice, notice here, it highlights everything yellow. So it has indicated that, okay, you have made adjustments. Um, and then if I refresh up here, it'll go ahead and set it back to the, the normal formatting. Um, I should mention, you don't have to go with the alternating lines look. There's different report formats that are easy enough to just hop in here and, and say, change my format. Um, just from a demo perspective, sometimes visually it's, it's easier to see. Okay, so that's the um, embedded calculation to be able to calculate uh, our sales and margin information. Um, this allows us, this is very similar to 
what we were showing on the target setting. But again, target setting may be just at that high level. You may not be setting gross margin targets at at that level. You know, that may be the finance group, whereas this this group is very focused on you know specific products, and that's why you see not just your accounts here, but you also see it by um, by product. So very similar to what we've seen with the units, same same idea, right? Um, I can come in and I can select a, a specific product if, if I'm responsible for a particular product division or product grouping. Um, otherwise, I can obviously look at everything. I can make changes at all different levels. And this is the same inverse functionality where if I were to come in and say, you know, overall for my consumer product, you, you know, this may, from a bottoms up perspective, we're going, we should be at 20%. Or case maybe. Okay. So again, that is the same inverse functionality, just used in um, a different way within um, a different grouping. Review templates, validation templates are typically provided within uh, the templates of our content. And so this is just um, a quick snapshot, just a different view of looking at it, where we have, again, view product focus, these templates are product focus, where we can, um, our filters, we can filter on specific periods, specific dates. Um, I can see my gross margin, which my sales and costs, my units, and really everything that I've planned um, in a different, you know, vertical view to be able to see and review it. Again, if you want to select all periods for the year, which is what I have selected here, um, versus maybe selecting individual periods or individual weeks, if you'd like, and seeing how that looks across the board. Okay. All right, so I'm just gonna go back to my planning launch pad here. One thing I didn't mention, you know, we, we talk a lot about the planning templates, but of course, you know, the visualizations, um, if you haven't worked a lot with them, um, are nice here. We have you know just a basic forecast where we have looking at our different um, regions where I can take, when I click on the pie chart, it expands it out. I have the ability to drill down. So now I can see, you know, deep south versus south central. I can drill down again. So South Florida, West Florida. So again, as far as my, um, so that was the end of it. So then I can drill back up. So anyway, uh, you know, again, I just wanted to point out how these, um, we typically talk quite a bit in the demonstration around the, the planning templates, the calculations, but the visualization piece is, um, it's really nice to have for your executive dashboards and other, and it's all interactive. It's interactive with the data that I just loaded in, right, that we just updated as part of our bottoms up planning. Um, from a, a store, so obviously these templates are just more focused. They will have similar look and feel, um, but more focused from a store view. We will still include the ability for, again, just more from a filtering to be able to, to view different products and to uh, limit that. Um, but certainly I can come in here and instead of selecting all retail stores, you know, maybe I want to just select Baltimore. So you'll notice my header changes and this is now, if I'm looking at it and I'm responsible for um, my Baltimore store location. I can come in here and I can specifically see what has been provided currently as that bottoms up budget for my store. And again, um, that has been purely from a, a product, right? And that's purely based off of prior year because we seeded that, we seeded the budget with prior year actual forecast. So that taking a look at that, um, the product owners have come in, they've made adjustments based on what they think is going to happen. And so now at the store level, I can come in and see this is what the budget currently is. Um, I may be more interested, again, I can look at it at the week level, I can look at it at the day level. So if I expand out here, you can see where basically I have um, week one and then I have days five. And of course, I can go expand down to each one of those. Um, so now I can specifically see 
okay, within my personal care, maybe I want to expand down to my hand cream again, right? I can now I can start to see what the units are, the expectations, the budget is for daily units within my store. Okay. Um, as that owner, I can come in, I could make adjustments, um, I can make changes again at that lower level, at the very um, high level. Um, depending on how you want to lock items, you can, as we talk about version management, you can make a copy so that you can maintain. Um, you can also allow the stores to apply um, additional units on top or reduced units and so it won't impact the original product forecast or plan. Um, so that is just again more inherent process um, that exists within SAC. That would be again it's a little bit specific to each company and how they would actually like the process to run and um, how they would like to retain you know initial um, information or initial budget data versus um, changes that may be made or may be impacted at the store level. Okay, so that's again units. We focus on units and um, ultimately then they can take a look at the sales dollars as well. Um, with additional inverse functionality at this level, if your stores decide that they would like to in um, increase or decrease just sales dollars, you can do that as well. And that will, um, changing that will actually change your sales units. So again, um, having that bi-directional almost planning capability um, is, is inherent to SAC. So I won't, I'm, I know I'm running short on time here, so I'm gonna focus on a couple other important aspects of this. Um, the new store plan, so a lot of times you may have um, new stores and you want to account for that. Um, SAC has functionality. So here I can come in and I can add a member. So I can say that I want to call this new store one. Right? Maybe it tells me that it couldn't find an existing member for that. Right? So what I'm doing is basically creating one on the fly. Um, now, you might be worried about this functionality, and so um, you don't necessarily have to utilize this. Um, in some cases, maybe not, you know, but in some cases, users with that um, authorization level should be able to come in and say, okay, well, you know, we're going to plan for X amount of new stores in this region. Um, and so you can come in here and actually create now your new store, you can see here, I'm just gonna leave the description as that. Um, and then, you know, here I may have uh, where it's going to open, 3-1-2020, right? So those are the properties that are um, also available. And then you can see here, it's got a little asterisk that says new store one has been added. Okay, so now I can do planning against that new store one if I want to. Um, I have the capability, we have embedded new store copy. So you, you know, I don't know, in, in most cases, maybe you would enter in, you know, from a complete zero base, but in many cases you may say, this store is going to have very similar results to, you know, another store that's currently in that region or other. Um, so I can say, you know, basically, I'm going to do this for, and notice every time it asks me for a version, what am I going to run this copy on? Um, and so that makes it easy because if I'm running it on budget, notice that budget version two, because I created it, it's still private to me, but it's there. So I have the ability to run these calculations on any version I want. So you don't have to have separate calculations for every version. And I may say, that I want to copy an apple, Baltimore, and we'll do this one. Okay, right, I can find that through the search, and I'm gonna say, let's use, uh, let's use the 2020 budget that we have created. And this one's gonna to go to our new store. So again, I can use the search bar, and I can look for a new store. There it is, pops up. 
say OK. I can run that. All right, so I just have to basically fill out, um, you know, fill in my prompts. That are pretty easy, and then all it does is it copies it down. All right, so this is very helpful when you're planning the new year. If you're forecasting, you need to go in and you want to go ahead and plan for um, for some new locations. Now I have this as an exact replica, um, and I can go in and I can make some adjustments or changes if I want. Okay. Similar to the store ops, um, we have just a review. Uh, and then the last thing on this, just to point out um, or also bring to the attention is the calculation of within our content that has the comp score. So here, um, this is more of a, a validation screen, but what we're trying to point out here is that we have a new store um, and the open date was 2019 March. And so with our assumption of after 12 after a year, 12 months, it now becomes part of the comparative uh, financials. So we have, I'm just looking at sales dollars here. You can see new store. Obviously, it falls into the new store type, and it's in an input data source. And so what our logic or calculation does, and then you can see this is actually by period or by date. I can run. I can run my calculation. Just gonna run that. Oh, I think I'll run it on the full year. Um does that work? All right, let me go back and run this one on the full year instead of period three. I think it just actually ran the details on period three, but Typically, when I'm if I'm looking at a full year budget, I'm going to want to go ahead and and clear that out. So what it basically does is, if I scroll down, right, I can see that three one as of three one two thousand twenty, it no it now resides in the comp store. So I've got store types. I've got new store and I've got comp store. And so basically starting on that date, what it does is it moves it out by moving it out of a, re, basically reclasses it to our comp store. Okay. That's a lot. I mean, that's basically the validation report. So you actually can see what's happening versus just you know, assuming that the system is right. So we have a validation, we have the built-in logic as well as the validation report that will assist you to review and say, okay, I can see that all of my new retail stores are actually being um, being classified now as a comp store and being reported appropriately. Okay. All right. Um, looks like I'm running out of time here. The last thing I will. Um, just mention is the promotional template um, that I talked about earlier. So this is just more from um, a standpoint of, again, you know, marketing may know that there are uh, specific promotions that are taking place. Uh, maybe that is on specific holidays. Maybe it's weekly ads, um, monthly ads. And so it really just allows them the capability to layer on um, additional results um, as it relates to, like I said, um, any promotions. Um, you can pre-populate the system, the dimension with specific promotions, um, that marketing individual or other, very similar to how we added the new stores, can do the same thing. They can come in and add member and they can add a new specific promotion um, and be, and so again, have more you know, specific detail around in the model for that. Um, so I won't elaborate any more on that, but just so that you're aware that we have that um, functionality in there as well. Um, certainly we have a handful of reports that also help with, you know, whether it be reporting um, from an actual or financial standpoint, as well as the budget. So being able to change different versions, again, just kind of giving you a quick view of some of these um, 
but being able to to come in, look at comparisons, actual versus forecast, having variances, being able to enter in comments, all of that functionality does exist and um, is there inherently with SAC. And of course, you know, we've applied that to our templates and our reports within that retail prepackaged content. All right, I know I've run over um, a couple minutes. If there are any questions, um, specific questions on how any of these templates work, um, how the accelerator or this content may work within your company, please let me know. Um, feel free to reach out to myself, to Lauren. Um, we'd be happy to help you with anything. Um, at this time, I will go ahead and close out the webinar. Um, just one uh, reminder that there is a survey um, when you close out of the webinar. Um, before you close out of the webinar, if you wouldn't mind completing the survey, that helps us tremendously. So thank you all for joining um, and have a nice rest of your day. Take care.